Welcome to Wrestling Talk. I'm Lennox Kaplan along with Paul Fay. And Paul, who do we have on the show today? Uh, we have Johnny Rods, Bill Coster, and uh, we have Paul Richards. Before, right from our very own city of Lynn Mass. Before we go on, uh, let, let me just comment on those buttons. Where did those buttons come from? You look like you're out on a, some sort of a campaign. Are you uh, helping one of the presidential candidates? Uh, no, I guess, I, <laughs> I guess not. Are you stoned or just stupid? Life's a blip. I don't think that would help any of the candidates. Doesn't that sound kind of video-ish? Or uh, life is a glitch would be more. Yeah, like or it. well, that would be. Don't they say that in newspaper language or something? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Or is that a blurb? I don't know. That's a blurb. A blurb oh. is in a newspaper. A blip is something you see on a radar scope. And in the second half of our show, we have a return guest appearance by Mel Simons, the trivia expert and wrestling uh, announcer. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think it should be a good show. So stay with us, and we'll be right back with Johnny Rods right after this. How do you find out when an administration is corrupt? find out when a government is hiding the truth? How do you find out about those who would like you not to find out? To become better informed about the role of a free press and how it protects your rights, contact the First Amendment Center. Hi, I'm Arthur Sutton. I'm here in the locker room at Malden High with Johnny Rods. I'm replacing Len Kaplan, who couldn't be here this evening because of a prior engagement. And I'd just like to say, I saw that battle between you and Ivan Pussy. You saw it, eh? You yeah. saw it. I'm glad you saw it because he was just here and you just gave him an interview or somebody else over here. And then he said that he has a problem with me. Well, he has a big problem with me, and I'm going to tell you. Because I know Ivan Pusky for a long time. He's been with WWF for many years. And you know, I was there. And you know, we got it on many times. And many times, sure, he nailed me. And many times, I nailed him. Is that what you want to say? I know I don't care what you're saying because I know you're ready to ask the question that uh, Ivan Pusky just did his number on me, but you know what? He couldn't even touch me. Take a look, I mean, take a look! Take a look and tell me do I look like I'm a piece of nothing, because that's what he thinks. And let me tell you something. Ivan Pusky, okay, he thinks that because he has been everywhere, all over the world and everything, and he thinks that he's got a little uh, peanut over here, but that's not gonna happen, because I'm after him, because he owes me a few before he gets me, I'm gonna get him. You understand that? Okay, now, I've been every, everywhere. I'm all over the place. No matter what happens, you mention the name, I'm Predictable Johnny Rods, and the people know that you got action, and that's what you had tonight. Now, don't look like I'm dead, right? Okay, you got any more questions? Any questions you had, I've answered. I'm not afraid to answer, I've been around. Ask me anything you want. See, you can't ask me nothing. Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, I remember seeing you in the WWF and you look, oh, sure, you look much me. better now. Of course you see. What do you mean much better? I'm an independent. I go yeah. WWF, I go anybody. It doesn't matter. Uh, I go where the action is. If the action is here with U.S. Wrestling Federation, that's where I'm going to be. And it doesn't matter. I'm looking for the money. You understand? Yeah. And, uh, and they don't have too many over here. Ivan Pusky was the only one that gave me that. And then you got that Richard Byrne, that he's got that karate thing going. I'm mean, going to tell you something. What do you see on me? Tell me, show the camera and show the camera and see what you see. You, you see, I got it, and I got my red with me, right? And yeah. I don't look like I'm there right now. Richard Brand, you get ready, baby, because I'm ready for you anytime you are. You understand? Yeah, okay. you look like you're ready to take on anybody That's that comes right. in your I way. I am ready, and he's the, he's the man of the hour, because I know he's the champ for the U.S. wrestling fair. But, you know, and Pusky is out there giving him a hand, but I don't care. I got my people, too. I don't think I need them. <laughs> yeah, I see the fans were cheering for you, some against, some for, but I noticed a lot were cheering for you. And that's right, it's that's right. I got everybody behind me, but I don't need everybody behind me. I got this, and I've been around for a long time, and I'm not, I don't have to have anybody behind me. The only thing they, they say Pusky deny is that somebody butted in and pulled me away from him because I'm going to tear his eyes out. Okay? Bye-bye. Uh, Hi, I'm Leonard Kaplan. I'm Paul Fay. And we're from Wrestling Talk. There's a problem that bothers us. And that's drunk driving. Thousands of people are killed and injured every year because of drunk driving. So take our advice and 
don't drink and drive, because as they say in the wrestling world, this may be the last body slam you'll ever take. Well, welcome back, and that was our interview with Johnny Rods. He didn't sound too happy, and my, my co-host, Len, here stands corrected. Uh, that, that wasn't you. That no, was, that wasn't That, that was wasn't Arthur me. Sutton who filled in for me that day. Yeah, we, we sort of forgot that Arthur had done that for us. Uh, Johnny Rods. Sorry, Arthur. Johnny Rods um, gained a little weight, I think, since he was in the I, WWE. I, I, I don't know so much if he gained weight. I think, I think he's been building himself a little bit. Yeah. Muscle-wise, I don't think, because being there, he didn't seem like he was really fat. Mm -hmm. He just seemed like he. He just seemed. Well, I remember seeing him in the in the seventies a lot in the well, WWF, and he was like not an ounce of fat on the guy. I I, I remember seeing him even more recent than that mm -hmm. at, at uh, shows. Uh, I think he did some for Kowalski, and mm -hmm. I think he did some. I think he did. Might have even done one for the yeah. ICW. Don't anybody quote me on that. I probably stand corrected. Sure, everybody's out there with their notebooks. Yeah, well, you never you know. Said, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I kind of remember him being smaller. I, I, I don't want to call the guy fat because I don't really think mm -hmm. he's fat. I think he's just well, not fat, but just a little bit. You know, let's face it. As you get older, you lose a little bit of the buoyancy and the elasticity and the trimness of youth. Have, have you? Do you understand that? I think so. I think that happened to you. I think that happened a long time ago. I think that happened to me too. It seemed like when I was uh, in school, I was. I, I could. Remember. I always had to go to the Husky department for the boys. Really? So I, I, Bob Frost said you were like a stick. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it was more like a trunk. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, who do we have in our next segment now? Um. Right. And he did a little refereeing. I, I understand. Yeah, he uh, he un he refereed. He did. It, he guest refereed for uh, Jamie and Corey West. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that match, Jamie went against uh, Crystal. Uh, or Princess Night Owl or somebody like that. Yeah, I'm not sure now. We, we'll have to look at the footage. But um, yeah, he, he guest refereed for Jamie and Corey rested at, 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 a, at a recent match over in Malden. Mm. OK, well, let's go to that right now in uh, our interview with Bill Costa. Hi, I'm Paul Fay from Wrestling Talk, and I have a very special guest with me from the radio station KISS 108, uh, Bill Costa. Uh, Bill, can you give us a little uh, feedback on what you've thought of the matches so far? Actually, I'm very impressed, and uh, I'm glad I came, and it's, it's great to be here because I've heard a lot about the United States Wrestling Federation, and obviously it's been a fast-growing federation thanks to people like the Iron Messiah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen a lot of great matches here. I mean, I haven't seen Ivan Putski in a long time, and I was always a big fan of his. Johnny Rods, I haven't seen fight for quite a while, and it was great to see him in the ring, too. Yeah, he's, uh, Ivan's got quite a bill on him, wouldn't you say? Well, it's interesting, because I guess um, uh, Ivan took some time off from wrestling, figuring he had done enough, and, and went back home to Poland, as, as I hear it anyway, yeah. and did nothing but uh, weight train and work out with the weights, and I think it definitely shows on his physique. Yeah. Uh, are you a wrestling fan yourself, or what's the story on that? Actually, I've gone in and out of wrestling. Uh, years ago, my brother and I, my father, I remember, used to take us to the wrestling matches a long time ago. And uh, so we kind of, um, we, we would go to the Boston Garden when there were matches there. And uh, we would watch them on TV. And then I kind of fell away from it for a while. And uh, then when everything happened with the major networks and the satellites just recently, we started watching again. And uh, then I started hearing about the USWF, and uh, here I am. Yeah. Uh, so are, are you going to be doing more of this commentating for them, or...? I don't know. Uh, it's kind of a fluke that I ended up here tonight. Uh, the Iron Messiah had come into KISS 108 uh, a few weeks back when he had a wrestling car here before. And uh, he asked me, hey, why don't you come over sometime and be a guest referee? And, you know, just in passing, I said, oh, yeah, I'll come on down. I'll do it. I think that'd be fun. So uh, finally, here I am. And I guess I'm going to be in the ring with the fighters. Uh, I guess I'm going to referee uh, the uh, female title match or something. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. So you're going to get to wrestle a female? Well, I'm not going to wrestle them, but uh, I'm going to call the match. And who knows what's going to happen once I get in there. I don't know. So, so you're actually going to step in the ring tonight, for real? Yeah, I'm going to be in the ring. But as a referee, uh, and I guess it'll be the uh, Jamie, Jamie West Crystal Hayes match. Charles Bronson isn't happy. Sure takes guts to vandalize parks or beat up on trees. But that's what some jerks are doing to our public lands. Only the land can't fight back. But we can. We can save our lands, you and me. 
Let's face it, someone who gets his kicks punching out flowers shouldn't be too much of a match for us. Right, take pride in America. Post Office Box 1339, Jessup, Maryland, 20794. Welcome back, and that was Bill Costa from Kiss 108 at the Marlin High School. And uh, he had a, quite a lot to say. How did he do as a referee, by the way? Oh, he, uh, he did quite well. He, uh, it was quite f uh, comical when Jamie kind of sat him up on the post. Jamie West. Yeah, Jamie West, uh, because, I don't know, he was, he was getting in the way or something, so <laughs> she kind of removed him from That's the, the polite way of putting your hands on a referee without getting fined, I guess. Yeah, something like that. I guess as long as you don't throw him completely out of the ring, you don't get uh -huh. fined or something. Uh-huh. And on our next segment, we have uh, an interview you did also with Paul Richard, who was no stranger to Wrestling Talk. He was our second guest yep. in this series. And uh, how has Paul changed, do you think, uh, since, since we interviewed him uh, in the studio? Well, I think he's uh, matured quite a bit in the wrestling world. I mean, he, uh, if you remember, he told us that he was, um, was uh, talking with the WWF yeah. and, and he, you know, and he finally um, made it. With yeah, he business. finally made it into the WWF. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, I did see him on a Nesson uh, broadcast. Right. Yeah. You know, he's doing, he's doing quite well. He's working a lot of the matches, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, he still does stuff for the other federations too. He's mm -hmm. he's done stuff for the USWF, and he's done stuff. Has to say when we go to the interview. Okay, so let's go to that right now. The interview with Paul Richard at the Mullen High School with Paul Fay. <laughs> Hi, this is Paul Fay again at Marlin High School, and I have a very special guest with me tonight uh, here at Marlin High School. Uh, his name is Paul Richards. He's from Lynn, Mass. And uh, there's been a lot of rumors floating around about this man uh, that he's made into the World Wrestling Federation. Just recently, he was uh, named the number one ref in the country, and uh, he's had a lot of success. Uh, Paul, can you tell us a little bit about this rumor we've heard? Well, it's true. I've started with the World Wrestling Federation. I made my debut October 3rd at the Boston Garden, and um, it's true. finally happened after seven years. Yeah, now there was some story going around that uh, you sort of made a secret appearance or something like that uh, at the New Hampshire Civic Center. Is, is that a true story or, or what? Yeah, I did. I had one match up there in New Hampshire, but I had broken ribs, so I wasn't able to referee regular. But I did do one match for the World Wrestling Federation already. And uh, there was something in, what was it, Wrestling Fury magazine about you being the number one ref in the country? Yes, that's true. Wrestling Fury magazine is going to do a nice story, too, about the number one referee in the country. And it's a pleasure to be on Wrestling Talk, the number one wrestling show in the country. Yeah. Uh, so give us a little background on yourself now. What are some of the other federations you've wrestled with in the past? I've worked with the AWA, the ICW, the IWF right here in the United States Wrestling Federation, one of the up-and-coming federations in the world today. Um, I've worked all around, and now I'm with the World Wrestling Federation. I hope to stay there for a long time. I should say ref, not wrestle. That's right. <laughs> uh, so what do you see in the future for Paul Richards? I just eventually full-time for the World Wrestling Federation, travel all over the world and see all the great fans all over the world. Well, thank you very much, Paul. It was nice having you just stop by for a few minutes and talk with us. My pleasure, Paul. Welcome back, and... Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that interview uh, that I did with Paul Richards. I know I enjoyed it. And uh, what did you think of it, Len? I thought it was good. I can't see the change in him uh, since he's joined the WWF. He seems more confident. I mean, he was always confident, but more, I can't quite put my finger on it, but he's more, more seasoned, maybe. Well, I, like I said, I think, uh, I think he's matured quite a bit, mm -hmm. you know, because he's, you know. You know, he, he's refere refereeing guys like Hercules now, so. Uh, right, so I. That's going to do that a lot That could definitely you. mature you, I think, yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next segment, we have Mel Simons, who is making his second appearance on the show. Right. He was and very interesting the first time he came on. We had to have him back because there was a lot of things, especially that I wanted to ask him. Right. And I did get to because ask him. I don't know if the audience knows this, but Len is a very big trivia person, and not not just wrestling trivia, but all types. So, to have a lot of to fun. have Mel on was a big treat for Len. Mm -hmm. I know that. So. Well, I used to listen to him for years on the Larry right. Glick show. Right. And uh, I had met him once before over at WBZ. Yeah. A friend of mine worked for Glick as an mm -hmm. engineer. And um, he was a nice guy, you know, because he didn't really get a chance to talk to me then because he was right. in the middle of being on the air. We had to sort of talk between commercial breaks. So uh, but, let's go to Mel Simons, right. uh, shall we? Sounds good to me. Let's, let's go to Mel Simons and see what else he has to say. About the wrestling world. About the wrestling world. No 
Welcome back to Wrestling Talk. We have with us again the king of nostalgia, Mel Simons. Glad you can make it back, Mel. Pleasure to be with you guys once again. It's been a while, huh? Thank you. And uh, Paul, what do, you what, have, what do you have on? Don't call me Lenny now. <laughs> Len, I always do. We had a big thing on radio. He kept yeah. calling me Lenny all night. I don't you don't know. like that name? Don't like that. Don't like that. Not on TV and radio. He doesn't like it. I don't like it in real life either. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, okay. Gee. I know the guys for years, and, and, and he says this. Anyway, <laughs> forget that. That's trivia, mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. trivia that nobody's interested in. Mm -hmm. But what we're interested in is uh, you are the king of nostalgia. And uh, you might know the whereabouts of some wrestlers that uh, Paul and I really can't get a handle on. Sure, I'd love to give it a shot, guys. And we were talking uh, off camera about some of them, like Chief J. Strombo and Baron Miguel Cicluna mm -hmm. and Tony Gurria. Where are these guys now? Uh, well, let's start with uh, Baron Mikel Ciclona, okay. who was a great villain for years in the WWF. One of my favorites. One of, the, one of your favorites. Mine, too. A great guy. I knew him well. From the island of Malta. And he was from the island. He really was? Absolutely was. <laughs> he is now driving a truck for the New York Times in New York and doing very, very well. He retired, I guess, about five years ago. And um, How old is he? He's about 58, 59, just short of 60. Wow. Was a super wrestler and uh, has uh, felt it was time to hang him up and got this, this fine job he's very happy with with the uh, New York Times. Is he still, as Vince McMahon always put it, lean as a racehorse? Knowing him, although I haven't seen him in a long time, Len, I know that he has always kept the... <laughs> Might be! Uh, Actually, I know, huh? A <laughs> rapper's cape around here. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of his career, I noticed, he, he never wore his cape anymore. He uh, used to come into the ring with just his trunks. Uh, uh -huh. For years and years, he used the cape. I thought uh, you were going to say j j uh, just his cape. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> never forgot to wear the trunks. <laughs> Although, I'm sure that's happened a couple of times with other guys. But uh, I, I don't know why why he stopped using it. But I, I love the cape as you did. He, had a, he kind of looked like Count Drax. Yeah, exactly. You know, with the b black sideburns mm -hmm. and the slick black mm -hmm. hair and the cape. And I expect him to say, blah, blah, Paul, I'm going to bite you in the neck. Blah. Mm -hmm. I never saw an mm -hmm. interview. Well, hit me with my camera. He did interview. Did he? He, spoke, he spoke with a, a bit of, a, a, of an accent. Uh -huh. But in real life, a super gentleman and a great, great wrestler. OK, Chief J Strongbow. Chief J. Strongbow has put on a few pounds. He's a pretty big boy, um, and he no longer wrestles, but he is an agent for the WWF, and he travels all over the country, Canada, and Europe as well, acting as an agent for the WWF wrestlers. Now, I always suspected that Cicluna and, and uh, Strongbow were brothers, because they kind of look alike. I guess they're not. No, uh, no. Not even related. Not. No, in the least. No, no relation that I know of. Now, what about Big John Studd? Big John Somebody Studd. Somebody more recent. A, a Big John Studd is uh, one of the most vicious and biggest men in wrestling. He has taken a year off. He is making movies. He is currently in Mexico, where he will be for six weeks making a movie. And then, then he's got a couple other things in the fire, both movies and television shows. And he will be coming back within the next year. Maybe we can get him on this show. Boy, it's entirely possible. That would be great. It's entirely yeah. possible you can get Big John on. Uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. He'd be a wonderful guest. He's uh, one of the great wrestlers in wrestling today. But unfortunately for us, but fortunately for him, he makes as much money with TV shows and movies, mm. which is why the world of wrestling has not seen him around. I, I've noticed a lot of... Uh, wrestlers lately have been going to the movies i mean uh oh yeah Andre and i don't mean the theater either hmm. i mean yeah. in Andre the movies the Giants, like great yeah in, in the princess bride yeah uh, roddy piper is uh is overseas somewhere now making a movie lou albano made that probably in somebody's basement Piscopo. and no 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 really <laughs> no, I know, I'm movies. Kidding. <laughs> and uh, many of the wrestlers have taken very yeah there's some well. talk uh hasn't, I'm sure, Hulk Hogan's probably had movie authors, right? Well, uh, Hulk Hogan, of course, his great claim to fame, the thing that really hit it big for him was in Rocky III. Right. Remember, he wrestled... Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. That's when he turned yeah, he from villain to good guy after exactly. that. Exactly. Professional wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Hulk Hogan, a household name. Mm -hmm. If you recall, Hulk Hogan was in the W... Oh, even elevate mm -hmm. oh it was opening bouts and you know semi-final bouts but after the movie rocky three and the public get got to see what a marvelous physical specimen he mm -hmm. was he changed his whole image for his own good i might add 
and became a good guy, and the rest, of course, is history. He's been WF, WF champ, I think, about three do years. You, do you remember how, how he was found? Have, have you ever read that? I, I, you I mean read, by Fred Blassie originally? Uh, I don't know by Fred Blassie, but I know he was, he was working in a rock band. In, he, uh, he's, in, a, in, a in, he's a good bass player. Yeah, he is. In Florida, yeah. in, in some club in Florida, and he, he thought he was going to be able to make it as a rock musician. Mm -hmm. And I forget who it was now, but two guys went into the club and they saw him, mm -hmm. and they, they offered him this thing with, well, you know, we can make you a wrestler, well, why don't you come with us? And, and at first he was, he was reluctant to go, but uh -huh. they, they finally convinced him, and like you said, the rest is history. Oh, boy, it would have been quite a loss for the world of wrestling had Hulk Hogan stayed with playing the bass. Yeah. Because as a wrestler, he not only is a marvelous champion and great wrestlers ever. But, uh, to a wrestler. He was a super wrestler, a bad guy, and he has been confined to a wheelchair. That's really hard to believe. Year. You were telling me that before yeah, the show. Yeah, very, very sad. This magnificent physical specimen who was a marvelous deep sea diver and wrestler and gymnast and uh, all the bumps and grinds and bruises of professional wrestling unfortunately took their toll. He made moves that I've never seen anybody, even people like the British Bulldogs move. move. He was one of the best. And, and, and considering that he was a big guy, Len, you he, know, it's easy for uh, smaller guys to do some of these acrobatics. I mean, he, he would walk around on the top rope. On the top I mean, rope, I remember that move. Do, do, do you know if there are any, not to interrupt you, but are there in, any videos available of him? Uh, I not, sure hope so. Not to my knowledge, perhaps in somebody's archives who collects wrestling memorabilia, but you cannot walk into a video store and find anything. I realize that. Jonathan. But I figured you have access to all these I got a, things. I've I, I got a gentleman that I've done some business with who was a collector of uh, old time wrestlers, uh, 40s and 50s and 60s primarily, and we may just be able to find you something by Don mm. Lee or Jonathan. Yeah, you know, I think whoever might own something by Don Lee or Jonathan, once people were to see it, that would make an awful lot of money. He was great. Absolutely great wrestler. I knew him personally, and he was a terrific gentleman as well. Do you know where he is now? What he's Last I where? heard was Canada, and unfortunately confined to a wheelchair. That's too bad. And he will be for the Who was the, the other guy you mentioned on the radio show that was from Canada also? There was another... From Canada? Yeah. Uh, or was it Man Mountain Mike we asked that? Might there, have been Man Mountain there Mike. There was something about... Um, he owns a deep sea diving business now or something, or he owns like... I remember a that. A fishing boat or something. I or? can't remember who that is. We no, talk about uh, so many unless people it's, on it here. It would be Don Leo himself, would it? Because mm. his whole band it, was deep sea. Uh, I, that maybe, must be him. Maybe, it was yeah, him. Maybe it was Could that. Be. I don't know. Could be. It was. And uh, Mad Dog Vashon, I heard, was in a car accident recently. Mad Dog Vashon was in a very serious car accident. He's had three operations and just had part of his foot amputated. It is very, very sad. He is uh, 58 years old. Of course, he doesn't wrestle anymore. I heard he was playing a comeback before that. Well, he's, he's been involved with his brother, Butcher, Butcher. Vachon, opening Mad Dog restaurants, similar to our McDonald's, right. our Burger King, throughout, uh, throughout Canada. And this uh, is what they were doing. As far as a comeback, that I didn't hear. Mm. As I say, 58 years old, so I don't know. Back, you know, like in the 50s and 40s, I mean... Did they have did they have like managers like they have today and did they have like girl valets and did they um, have all that stuff or was it just basically the guy would walk out and that was it? In most cases the guy seen that were on out. about flash and glitter uh, and everything. But again, Gorgeous George talking about being an innovator, he was the first to have a manager. A valet he called him, not a manager. Mm -hmm. His name was Jeeves. And eventually Jeeves. <laughs> Jeeves. And he would come in with a tray mm. with an atomizer and he'd spray the ring, he'd spray the referee, spray the opponent, you know, to make them germ free. And he was the first second I can't remember. Then he was replaced by a gal who was his managerette, he used to call her. I can remember guys like um, Luthez having a manager mm -hmm. uh, back in the 50s, and his manager, incidentally, was a great wrestler back in the 30s. And 20 Strangler Lewis, a three, four times world's champion. So in the early days, there were managers, but not 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 like there is today. today. I yeah. really hate to do this, but we have to go again. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on again, Mel. It's been great. There are thousands yeah. more questions that I could ask. I'm sure Paul yeah, really. could too. We'll but do it again. We're out of time. So uh, we'll be right back right after this. Lou Gossett is annoyed. Hey, you know, we've got some real bad guys in this country. 
abusing public lands, defacing parks, robbing historic sites. These are our lands, yours and mine. You know, the good guys. Now, are you going to let a bunch of bad guys run us off our public lands? Or are you going to help save the lands? Let's show these bad guys that the good guys always win. Right, take pride in America. Post Office Box 1339, Jessup, Maryland, 20794. You did a good interview. We'll do another good one. And that was Mel Simons, here for a second appearance on Wrestling Talk. And I think that went very well. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I know you're always pleased when we have him on your... Because mm -hmm. I know, like I said in the beginning of this, you're a real trivia well, I kind of grew. I kind of grew up listening to Mel on, on the Larry Glick show. So right. it's always a pleasure for me. I know his style, and I knew just what to yeah, ask Yeah, didn't you say you met him a long time ago up at the I, radio I station? I met him just uh, briefly, briefly yeah. during commercials, during the Larry Glick show, when yeah. a friend of mine, he was an engineer for Glick. Right. And he brought me up there. He, he had borrowed some equipment from uh, BZ. Right. for a little skit that we did over at Emerson. Mm. Uh, he expressed some interest about coming back, because yeah, like, like uh, I, I think that this is really uh, important to the people that are really interested in wrestling mm -hmm. to know, you know, there's probably like, there's probably a lot of young kids and even some older people that probably wonder where these big time wrestlers right. have gone. Right, I don't think people get tired of hearing that because right. these wrestlers as well as other people that you see Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they appear for months at a time constantly. You constantly see them on TV or hear them on the radio or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're gone. You know? yeah. What happened to them? You know? Right. Because, you know, somebody like a wrestler, you, 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 you grow up with them, mm -hmm. seeing them as a wrestler, mm. and then they like just kind of disappear from the scene, uh, the things or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. you never... You never you never. Th I think what you said. You never. Dis you never think of them as being like a truck driver or something. Else. Right. Because we're all victims. I think of the media. Right. When when somebody appears in a newspaper article or a television interview or a radio interview or mm -hmm. whatever. You th anyway, I think that's about all we have for today. Which we had a lot of people on today. I think the most people we ever had on the show. Yeah. I mean, they were sh short little they were, snippets. Yeah. They were little. They were little snippets, like you said. But I think they were sort of to the point. Oh. Virtual uh, pot potpourri. I, I, I think Johnny Rod sounded like he was a little mad at uh, of, at, uh, at Ivan. Right. And he took it out on Arthur. Yeah, because <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think Arthur was a little nervous. It looked like his first. I think that was his first interview I, with a wrestler. I think. Well, he did a very good job. Yeah, he though, did. Think, he did. You know, yep. Held his own against Johnny Rods. I think that yeah. says something right. for him. So I, I think you'll probably see uh, Rods and Putski go against each other mm. again because Definitely they both the sounded like they. Definitely in the future. Would like to have that happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's all the time we have for today here on Wrestling Talk. I'm Leonard Kaplan along with Paul Fay inviting you all to stay in the ring. <laughs>